There we go. Ha. Tuning day, baby. And I'll show you why. <gasps> what are these? Let's get at it. Clean and organized workspace is a happy workspace. I'm surprised you didn't know that. Alright, so there we go. Um, and uh, on my Wenger here. So I got my Wenger at Ibex, got my Accutune. I have him, uh, uh, Trent has cut this way past center. I think I'm a quarter inch past center. Um, and then tap, drills and taps. This is an all G10 riser. Drills and taps it with a 5 16 24 uh, plunger hole. So I can run an AccuTune. I'll show you that how to how to tune, how to use it. Um, got the custom uh, limb sleeves here, ghillie sleeves. Really enjoying those. Uh, my brother-in-law, uh, Trav. You saw him on the Hawaii hunt video. Uh, him and I last season, right before season, we came up with these. Have some counterweights here on the side of the Wengard. Have him uh, had him put some 5 16 24 uh, stabilizer bushings here, and then one here on the side. So keep hitting that light. Sorry. I can add about three or four ounces down here to the bottom left to kind of help balance this bow um, nicely so it's jumping straight to target vertically. Uh, contacted Gary, Gary Hall of DNM Custom Arrows. Um, ooh, we got some beauties. Six with fletching and six bear shafts. I'm gonna be running trad veins on the other six. So he crested these for me. Like, so I have matching crestings. These are beautiful. This with orange accents. The orange accents are my 340s. These are with the red accents are the 500s. And then just the chartreuse and black are my 400s. So got a lot of options here, but these 340s are gonna be the ticket. And again, these are the gold tip XT classics or classic XT, really heavy, heavy arrow, heavy duty arrow. Probably the toughest arrow on the market right now. You just can't break these things. Uh, it's, it's a really nice system here. I'll show you this in here in a minute. So just a little bit of heat. I'm gonna show you a little trick that I do with these half cert and out cert uh, systems. Um, there's a lot of these on the market right now. So I do use Kim Shaw, the hot melt glue um, for everything. Uh, I know some people don't do that. They use the epoxies, that's great. I've never had an issue with this. I like to have just a slight bit of give. The Kim Shaw is really nice. It's a really good stiffness durometer um, that gives you just a tiny bit of shock, shock absorption, um, but not so much to where it, it's not gonna grab. Um, but also it's not so stiff that when you hit something extremely hard that you're gonna crack that, that epoxy bond. Uh, so I really like using hot melt. Um, and so what I do is after you push your half cert in, you slowly roll that glue out to the very end. Just about to put this collar system on. So what I like to do is just give it just a little flash of heat, just to soften it up a little bit. Be careful not to give it too much heat. Okay, that's the one thing about using hot melt, especially the Kim Shaw high quality stuff, is you really don't wanna get this thing smoking hot, charring, turning brown. But right there, right when you see it going glossy, 
that's the time you push this thing on all the way around and give it a couple seconds and you can pick this glue bond right off with a nice, look how clean that is. This is a bomb proof system. They're super tough, super strong. Gold tip, classic XT arrows. 12 grains per inch on these 340s. 11.3 grains per inch on the 400s. 10.5 10 I think on the 500s, I'm not too sure. It's in the 204 family which I think is a sweet spot for, for my hunting rig right now. So, all right, stay tuned. Let's start tuning. Stay tuned. <laughs> Get it? Okay, getting a little sunny out here. All right, so what I like to do is I'm targeting about 150 grain screw and tip um, just simply because I'm conscious about arrow weight right now. Um, when I'm tuning, it's a whole game about, because I'm an aimer, I do use the tip of my arrow, and so I'm paying attention to my gaps. So I want to make sure my gaps are minimized. I do run a crawl if I have to. Targeting for this year around 22 yards is going to be my point on. So I like to be able just to hold bottom of chest on the animal. With this rig, this weight, uh, from experience, I know that if I hit that 680 to 700 grain range, that's going to be really sweet for that 22 yards and in. The only sacrifice, like the only sacrifice here, the only sacrifice. Archery is a game of sacrifices. So if I'm shooting a 680 to 700 grain arrow and I have really good gaps, exactly what I want to see, my sight picture is good at 22 yards and in, the problem with that is 30, 35 yards. Anything long, man, my arrow just starts dying really fast. So shooting at further distance, 30, 35 yards, which I don't do very much in the whitetail woods here in Western Pennsylvania. Um, so I'm not too, too concerned about it, but I do like to have a game plan. If I'm feeling comfortable, the green light's on, 30 yards, what do I have to do? And typically I'm holding at the top edge of the back or a couple inches higher. A bear shaft and a fletch shaft with 200 grain tips, 175s, two of them with 175. AccuTune set to about center shot right now. Get an idea of what's shooting the best. So right now I'm just gonna shoot these six arrows, see what's flying good. Uh, I'm just gonna aim right at the middle of that bale and uh, I'm just targeting, wanting to get the fletched arrows and the bear shafts impacting somewhat together. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crawl down to the same distance about that far. On my Yoast tab, that's the fourth large mark down. And I'm gonna shoot every shot from here. I don't care where my arrows impact. All I'm looking for is left to right. I'm not really worried about up and down. So those are flying really good. I can already tell that the 150, just like how I wanted, is probably going to be the ticket. Shoot this bear shaft. Oh yeah, that's really good. Let me shoot the rest of these real quick. Um, I think I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish by jumping a spine range. The uh, the 150s are great. That's really what I wanted. I'm going to shoot this uh, 175 and see if there's a drastic difference. All right, starting to get weak. That uh, that 175 kicked tail left. So I can already tell that 175 is already out. There's no reason for me to even shoot this 200. Um, but I'm going to anyhow, because I'm curious. So I expect this really to kick tail left. Okay, pretty tail left. Let's just go check out what those look like. All right, okay, so these two arrows here are my 150s. Um, you can see that arrow's looking pretty good. Let me see, let me make sure. Yep, that was my 150. You can see it was a little bit tail left. Um, this is also my 150. These two flew really nicely. My, uh, my left and right, probably a little bit of a form issue with the spare shaft, but I could tell in flight that thing was just perfect. Yeah, my 175. And this 175 started kicking tail, pretty hard tail left. So I know these are out. I'm not, I'm not even going to mess with the 175s. And then these lower 200s here, um, this bear shaft was really erratic. And uh, I, I did see a little bit of kick with this, uh, with this flesh shaft. Now I start my micro tuning process. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to really start focusing in on what I'm doing with my tip of my arrow. I'm going to take 
these arrows that had the 175s and 200s up front, throw 150s, and now we're gonna start microtuning using the AccuTune, so I'll show you that process. All right. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I just updated all my arrows with the 150 grain tips. I'm gonna be using the AccuTune to get my bow shooting straight down the middle with both my fletch shafts and my bear shafts. Give myself a nice vertical line to aim at. I don't care about elevation height impacts. I'm probably gonna stick the tip of my arrow right here on this line. All I'm worried about is am I hitting to the right, which is showing a little weak, or to the left. And I will tune out that left and right by adjusting my AccuTune. I'll show you that process. So let's go get it done. It'll be good. Okay, all we're looking for is where I impact, left and right. I'm going to start off, I'm going to aim middle of the top bale and right on that yellow line. And I'm just going to crawl down the same crawl I did last time. So I'm hitting a touch left, about two inches. See if the bear shaft does the same. It is, same thing. So I'm getting a little kick high. So I think what I'm gonna do is just adjust my knock point just a little bit. And then let me show you what I'm gonna do with the AccuTune. Okay, AccuTunes come with, each of them come with a little Allen key. There's a little set screw right here. So all I'm gonna do is just pop it loose. Just a little half turn. Now, since I'm hitting to the left, that's indicating that I'm just a little bit touch stiff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a little bit more center shot. So all I'm gonna do is crank on this AccuTune and I'm bringing this strike plate in towards the bow, okay? I'm gonna tighten that set screw back up and now I'm gonna shoot again. Okay, I'm gonna jump straight to the bear shaft. Got the AccuTune adjusted. Let's see if I can't hit that yellow strike. All right, I hit a little bit weak. Um, so I might've went one turn too much. I went two turns on the AccuTune. It's amazing how much that might play a role. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back it off one turn and let's see where I hit. There you go, it's that fast. Pretty darn good shot. Let's shoot these flut shafts for uh, for good measure. Hit the yellow. Oh yeah, this thing's tuned. It feels great. Let's go check it out right now. Ooh. All right. This is the one that actually hit the yellow and bounced out of the target. First arrow right here, okay? Second bear shaft right here. So you can see I was a little bit too stiff. Beautiful thing about the AccuTune, all I did was move the AccuTune side uh, center shot and I went a little bit too far. Started impacting weak, okay? So then what I did is I backed it off again and I impacted here, okay? My third bear shaft impacting into the target nice and straight along with the flat shafts then i shot two more feathered shafts this is shot number five or i'm sorry this is shot number five right on the yellow and shot number six made the made the yellow move again um so pretty much that was my fletch group at 28 yards pretty much uh, i'm gonna say that thing is tuned here's the beautiful part about this 12 arrows i'm fully tuned brand new rig brand new limbs i mean i'm ready to go for hunting season it took me 12 arrows um being able to tune with that accutune is is just absolutely sweet all right now for the final test three more arrows and i'm going to shoot 150 grains of badassery in the form of a cutthroat broadhead
cutthroat broadhead test. Got three of them. I'm gonna do a quick walk back. I'm gonna aim right here about in the center. And all I'm looking for, all I'm looking for is it to impact in this general area. I'm watching for arrow flight. Let's do a 10, a 20, and then a 30. I wasn't concentrating on aiming. All I was looking for was arrow flight. And all three of these arrows at 10, 20, and 30 yards showed zero sign of any type of wavering with these broadheads on, just flying like a field tip. 15 arrows, perfectly tuned, ready for hunting season. Now, between now and hunting season, all I'm gonna be doing is slight knock height adjustments and different crawls. Once I have my aim points down and I have my sight pictures and gaps and trajectories right where I want them, I'll put a fixed knocking point on my string. That way I just slide up to that every single time for every single shot, no matter if that deer is standing at two yards or 30 yards. I'm gonna shoot from that. I'll do another video right before season, just showing you that final setup. But as of right now, I'm digging it. Perfectly tuned. Fall is in the air. 